good morning children today uh, in 10th science textbook unit number 20 we are going to start a new lesson the lesson is breeding and biotechnology so uh, unit number 20 so already we have completed few lessons in the biology portion so this is lesson number 20 unit 20 what is the name of the lesson breeding and biotechnology it's a new chapter we are going to learn so you know that in india's population current rate of uh, india's population is 1.380 billion in the year by 2050 it's going to be it is uh, 1.7 billion so but now the food production is only 57 percentage of food production is available for the whole population. Imagine in the year 2015 what there is a great demand for food. So we have to increase the food production. So for this in this lesson we are going to learn a different aspects of science the emerging field of science that is plant breeding, breeding and biotechnology. So first we shall learn what is plant breeding. So plant breeding is a technology of improving economically important plants. So that is called as plant breeding. So to increase the, for instead of increasing the, uh, the population of India, for the increase in population, there should be some uh, measures are taken for food production. So the first measure is improving the plant breeding technologies. Increasing the economically important plant varieties, for example, rice variety, wheat variety, maize variety. Increasing economically important plant varieties, it is called as plant breeding. The second one is animal husbandry. Animal husbandry is here, here even in animal husbandry is improving, improving uh, animals, improving breeding the animals. So that is called as animal husbandry. Animal husbandry, it is improving the genetically important desired characters of animals for meat production, for milk production, for improving the quality of leather, it is called as animal husbandry. So plant breeding means improving economically important varieties of plants is called as plant breeding. Second one is animal husbandry. Animal husbandry means so here breeding of animals, it is the technique of breeding animals. Here animals, uh, that is uh, why we should breed the animals for increasing the food production. Food production in the sense means increasing the rate of meat, increasing the milk production, increasing the egg production. So such increasing the, the food production and food quality it is called as animal husbandry. So now biotechnology, so now using this uh, principle biotechnology certain bio kit labs for example increasing the production of insulin other applied medical products can be improved using the biotechnology principle and even in modern agriculture so using the breeding and biotechnology principle in modern agriculture improving the sowing seeding and improve certain techniques, agriculture techniques can be improved in all the areas. For example, in sowing the seeds, uh, in uh, drilling, in threshing, in all that uh, biotechnology principles can be used to increase the food production as well as to increase the food quality. So now we shall see the next term, what is green revolution? Green revolution is the process of increasing the food production, process of increasing the uh, food production by improving crop varieties under developed condition, under developing countries or developing countries. 
So that is called as green revolution. So what is green revolution means? Increasing the food production. So because for the increase in population, we need to increase the food production. So for increase in food production, increasing the green revolution means increasing the food production by improving the crop varieties is called as green revolution. So there was a famous scientist, Dr. Norman E. Gorlock. He was the famous scientist to improve the technology. So he is called as father of green revolution. He is an American scientist. He is from America. So Dr. Norman E. Borland, he is called as father of green revolution. So joining with him, so Indian scientist, Indian famous scientist, Dr. M. S. Swaminathan, he is called as father of Indian green revolution. He joined with this scientist Norman E. Borlag in 1960s itself and he helped a lot to improve the wheat production. For example, Dr. M. S. Swaminathan after the independence in 1960s, that is in post-independence, in 1960s from two tons, from seven tons of, from two tons of wheat variety, he raised to 12 tons of wheat variety using the principles of Norman E. Borlag. He is an American scientist, he is an Indian scientist. So he is called as Dr. M. S. Swaminathan. He is called as father of Indian Green Revolution. So what is green revolution? Increasing the food production by improving the crop varieties is called as green revolution. So now, he what are the uh, what are the what are the works he has done is he has improved certain wheat varieties. So from some tons that is he is enormous from two to twelve tons he has enormously uh, uh, after his hard work he has done so much work. So what are his work is Sonalika, Kalyan Sona. So these are the wheat varieties that is dwarf, semi-dwarf wheat varieties. Semi-dwarf means short varieties. Semi-dwarf wheat varieties were developed by Dr. M. S. Swaminathan. What are the varieties are Sonalika, Kalyan Sona. These are semi-dwarf wheat varieties. And next one is IRH. IRH is semi-dwarf rice variety. So these varieties were eventually produced by Dr. M. S. Swaminathan. So based on his uh, research work, enormous amount of food production was increased. So he is called as father of Indian Green Revolution. So who is called as father of green Indian Green Revolution is Dr. M. S. Swaminathan. So whose father of Green Revolution is Dr. Norman E. Borlaug is called as father of Green Revolution. Indian Green Revolution is Dr. M. S. Swaminathan. So he has improved some rice varieties. So these, these Sonalika, Kalyan Sona, these are wheat varieties that was developed from Mexico. And IR18, IR8 it is a rice, semi-dwarf rice variety that was developed in India as well as in Philippines in the year 1960. So in the Philippines we have a rice research institute is found in Philippines. So from that area this rice variety was developed. It was developed simultaneously both in India as well as in Philippines in the year 1960. And afterwards, so these are the contributions of Dr. M. S. Swaminathan. So there was a famous scientist, uh, Namalwar, scientist Namalwar. He was a farmer as well as a scientist Namalwar and he is from Tamil Nadu. He has also contributed uh, some uh, research works to this green revolution. He also has helped to increase the food production, uh, Namalwar. So next one. Uh, so we have to protect the crops, 
protect the crops from various uh, uh, microorganisms like virus, bacteria and fungi. We have to protect the crops. So such crop resistant varieties mainly plant breeding involves in improving the crop uh, food production and developing the crops from the disease resistant varieties. So here this one is, uh, so I told you, so diseases are caused in plants from virus, viral diseases are there, bacterial diseases are there and fungal diseases are there. Based on using the uh, plant breeding and biotechnology principles, disease resistant variety crops are produced. So for example, in wheat, uh, the crop disease resistant varieties are from, that is what I want, which this is the name of the disease, leaf and stipe rust. So this uh, disease resistant variety of wheat is produced from this uh, disease, leaf and stipe rust. Second one is cauliflower. So from cauliflower, a black rot uh, disease was prevailing and uh, based on this plant breeding, this is resistant uh, to this disease. So wheat is, uh, wheat variety is resistant to leaf and stipe rust disease, cauliflower is resistant to black rot disease, then cowpea is tatapairu, cowpea means tatapairu, it is resistant to bacterial blight disease. So three different varieties of plants uh, are uh, produced and they are resistant to these diseases. So using plant breeding technology, these three plants are resistant to these three diseases. Again, even some insects, insects or fungi, they, are, they will also affect the plants. So for example, brassica, brassica means here brassica, this uh, cabbage, brassica scientific name is cabbage. So here this brassica, it is resistant to aphids. So it is an insect, aphids is an insect, flat beans. Flat beans in Tamil means avarakai. So this uh, flat beans is resistant to fruit borer, fruit and stem borer. So fruit and stem borer means small worms which will make holes in the fruit as well as the stem. So this flat bean is resistant to fruit and stem borer and lady's finger is also resistant to fruit borer. So borer means making so this uh, flat bean and lady's finger, they are resistant to fruit as well as stem borer. So borer means making boring, that is making small holes in the fruits, it is called as uh, the small insects which makes holes in the fruits is called as borer. So flat bean and in lady's finger, so they are resistant to fruit and stem borer. So now, so far we have seen what is plant breeding, biotechnology, what is animal husbandry, then we learn about green revolution. So now we are going to learn about biofortification. See, the protein content as there is increase in population, we are in a demand of getting or receiving a food production with a high protein. Either human beings or in turn even the animals, they are in demand of high proteins. So for this, the crop production should be increased with high protein content, high oil content, high minerals and vitamins content. So now there is a demand of food production, increasing the food production or plant production with the increase in protein content with increase in oil content and with increase in all the essential nutrients. So now we are going to learn a new term biofortification. The new term is biofortification, increasing the plant production with the desired quantity of protein is called a protein, vitamins and minerals is called biofortification. So increasing the plant production with the increase in protein content 
vitamin content and mineral content is called bio fortification so such terms will be asked in two marks so define bio fortification so already i told you what are the disease resistant varieties that is a tabular column that can be asked in two marks as well as this one so brassica means cabbage plant so scientific name of cabbage is brassica so here this can also be asked in two marks so here this definition define bio fortification bio fortification means increasing the plant production with increase in protein vitamin and mineral content is called bio fortification using this process bio fortification enormous number of new varieties of plants are produced using the plant breeding technique so those plants first we shall see protina shakti and ratna are maize varieties here boys please listen this can be asked under two marks so what are this is a lesson back question what are the plants are increase what are the plants that is increased in protein content using bio fortification this can be uh, uh, to this can be asked in two marks and this is a lesson back question so what are the varieties is protina protina shakti ratna are the three maize varieties of plants that is increased due to bio fortification maize varieties means here the protein content found in the maize is increased then atlas 66 atlas 66 it's a wheat variety and this wheat variety is also produced using bio fortification principle then iron rich rice variety is produced then vitamin a already you know that in carrot pumpkin vitamin a is present but still increasing the production of vitamin a in carrot and pumpkin it is produced using this principle bio fortification so vitamin a is increased in carrot pumpkin so these four points you have to learn for two marks as well as the definition you have to learn for two marks so for bio define bio fortification so increasing the plant production with increase in protein vitamin and mineral content is called as bio fortification and here what are the varieties protina shakti ratna are maize varieties atlas 66 is a wheat variety and iron rich rice variety is produced using this uh, bio fortification principle and vitamin a content is still increased in carrot and pumpkin so now we are we shall move on to the next topic methods of plant breeding so in this methods of plant breeding there are different steps the first one is introduction second one is selection third one is polyploid breeding and fourth one is mutation breeding and fifth one is hybridization all this will come under this title methods of plant breeding what is the plant breeding already i told you improving economically important plants that is called as plant breeding here there are five steps in that first step is introduction so introduction is improving the introducing the new varieties from uh, different foreign countries is called as introduction here for example from wheat varieties is introduced from mexico that is called as introduction here this is called as exotic variety exotic variety means a variety that is introduced from foreign country is called as exotic variety whereas the variety which is introduced in india itself it is called as indigenous variety so the first method of plant breeding is introduction introduction means introducing a new variety of plant from foreign country that is called as exotic variety is called introduction and the second one is selection selection is growing a group of plants 
in that group of plants desirable plants that is the plant which has a desirable quality what are the desirable quality means that plant may be giving more production in short time as well as that plant can be disease resistant that is called as a desirable character or desirable quality so first selection first one is introduction introducing a new plant variety from any foreign country it is called as exotic variety second one is the selection so in a group of plants a desirable quality of plants is selected desirable quality is see desirable quality means that plant can give more number of fruits or vegetables in short time or that same plant can be disease resistant so resistant to certain diseases so such qualities are called as desirable qualities so such type of plants are selected that is called selection and here this selection is of three types the first one is mass selection second one is pure line selection and the third one is clone selection the first one is mass selection in mass selection it will take about uh, it is a long this selection period itself it will take a long time long time means nearly some 7 to 8 years it will take the first one mass selection is here the plants are grown in a mass in that plant desirable quality of plants is selected and after the desirable quality of plants is selected that plant will be allowed to grow that is the second generation of plant and then after some 7 to 8 generation a handful of a group of uh, desirable quality plants are selected that is called a uh, mass selection and those seeds will be given to the farmers for uh, agriculture purpose so first one is mass selection mass selection means here in a group or in a mass plants are grown first they will be growing the plants in that plants those plants with desirable quality desirable quality means that plant can be resistant to disease and it can be grown fast it can produce more number of fruits and vegetables such type of plants will be selected and those plants will alone be separately grown in one field and after some 7 to 8 generations such plants will be collected and those seeds from the plants will be given to the farmers for agriculture purpose that is called as mass selection and the second one is pure line selection in pure line selection it is called it is otherwise it can also be called as individual plant selection here only one plant is selected here group of plants is selected here only one plant is selected that is called as pure line selection for example here so some plants will be grown a plant with a desirable quality only one plant alone using self fertilization technique the plant one plant desirable plant alone will be uh, grown and that plant will be similar the phenotype and the genotype will be similar already you know what is phenotype phenotype means physical expression of the character the external appearance of the character genotype means genetic makeup of an individual the genes of an plant that is a genotype so pure line selection means only one plant is selected after generation after generation using self fertilization technique and that the plant will be similar with the phenotype and genotype with the parent plant so that is called as pure line selection the third one is clonal selection or clone selection in clone selection using vegetative methods using vegetative methods or using vegetative asexual reproduction or vegetative propagation the clones will be selected for example i will say you an example bryophyllum it's a plant in which the vegetative from the leaf tip the leaf buds will start developing those buds will give rise to a new plant that is called as clone using 
the vegetative parts of the plant vegetative parts of the plant means root stem leaf excluding flower is called as the vegetative parts of the plant using the vegetative part or using the asexual method of reproduction the plants are produced and that is called as clones and that type of selection is called as clonal selection and in the clonal selection also the plant will be similar to the parent plant so this is about selection selection there are three types mass selection pure line selection clonal selection the next one is polyploidy polyploidy breeding so you know what is diploid diploid means an organism is having two set of chromosome is called as diploid and the gametes which is having only one set of chromosome is called as haploid so the plants which is having more than two sets of chromosome is called polyploidy poly means many and ploidy is having more than two sets of chromosomes is called polyploidy so using polyploidy breeding we can produce seedless watermelons and bananas seedless so using polyploidy breeding poly means many so ploidy is a plant which is having more than two sets of chromosomes is called as polyploidy breeding so using this principle seedless watermelons seedless banana can be produced and there is a variety tv29 it's a t variety so at this t variety is having a tolerance to soil for all this this new variety tv29 t variety can be produced and critical so this is a critical is a cereal so this is cereal is produced using wheat and rye so this critical is a combination of wheat it's a critical is a combination of wheat and rye both these uh, wheat is crossed with rye rye is like a rice variety like oats this rye is also a rice variety like it's like a rice variety so it's a combination of wheat and rye so critical is produced next one is raphno brassica it is a all or tetraploid plant raphno means radish raphno means radish and brassica is cabbage so it's a combination it's a com combination of radish and brassica is called as raphno brassica and such plant is uh, produced and uh, this is a all or tetraploid so this is the third one polyploid breeding so plants having more than two sets of chromosomes they are widely used in different fields so seedless watermelon banana can be produced TV29 a TV variety is produced and critical critical is a combination of wheat and rye is produced and radish and brassica is raphno brassica is produced so the next one you are going to learn is mutation breeding we are going to learn mutation breeding first we shall see what is mutation sudden heritable change in the gene is called as mutation some change but some change in the gene sudden change sudden heritable change in the gene is called as mutation it lead to some new developed species so for this this mutation breeding is used so mutation means sudden heritable change in the gene it leads to genetic variation of the plant here the substance which cause mutation is called as mutant so the substance which cause mutation is called as mutant and here this mutagen is a substance there can be a physical mutagen chemical mutagen two types of uh, mutagen so physical mutagen is includes x rays alpha rays beta rays gamma rays and the chemical mutagen includes Uh, nitrous acid mustard gas so these two substances are called as chemical mutagen so using these uh, exposure to physical rays or exposure to chemical uh, substances there can be increase in the production of plants some change can be produced so the first one is was sarbarabadi sonora sarbadi sonora it's a wheat variety is produced next one atomita two rice 
it is uh, one rice variety is produced and ground nuts with the thick shells can be used to producing this mutagenic agents. So, physical mutagens and chemical mutagens. So, those substances which uh, causes mutation is called physical mutagen. The substance which causes a chemical mutagen means those substances which cause mutation can be of two types physical and chemical. Alpha rays, beta rays, gamma rays, X rays are called physical mutagen. Chemical mutagens are uh, mustard gas, nitrous acid. So, here Shardar Badi Sonara wheat variety is produced. Atomata 2 rice and thick groundnut shells are produced using mutation breeding. The next one is hybridization. What is the hybridization? Using hybridization that is plants which is having desirable quality. Desirable quality means resistant to disease, resistant to temperature for all these such types of plants are collected and two such desirable quality plants are crossed that is called as hybrid and that technique is called as hybridization. Next one is using this hybridization technique, critical is formed. Already I told critical is a combination of wheat and rice. So, this is the combination is produced. Hybridization. Hybrid means crossing, breeding. So, crossing two parents with desirable qualities is called as hybrid. hybrid and that technique is called hybridization. Next one is animal breeding. Animal breeding, breed, breed means the plants with desirable, anim, the next one is animal breeding. So, breeding means animals with desirable quality. So, here breeding technique means the parents, either the male one or the female one, they should have desirable quality. In animal desirable quality means increase in milk production, increase in uh, meat production, Increasing in the egg production is called as breeding quality. So, animal breeding is a technique in which the parents will have desirable quality. And this animal breeding is of two types, inbreeding and outbreeding. Inbreeding means cross made between a species or same species cross made within closely related species is called inbreeding. For example, Isargale is a sheep variety from Punjab and it is breed within the species. So, a breed made within the species, I will say what is the species? Group of similar organisms is called as species. So, inbreeding means uh, breed or cross made within the same species is called inbreeding. Next one is outbreeding. Outbreeding means two different uh, species. For example, male donkey uh, cross made between male donkey and female horse. This is completely different and this is different. A cross made between male donkey and female horse a new variety of organism mule is produced and this mule it is stronger than donkey as well as horse. So, this is called as outbreeding a cross made between within the two species within the same species is inbreeding outbreeding a cross made within two different groups is called outbreeding example mule. So, last one is heterosis or hybrid vigor. So, due to cross breeding improving superior quality of breeds is produced is called heterosis or hybrid vigor. In heterosis or hybrid vigor increase the cattle production, increasing the meal production, increasing the egg production is called heterosis or hybrid vigor. Superior quality of breeds are produced due to crossing over is called heterosis or hybrid vigor. So, boys in this video we have learnt the all the topics covering plant breeding. What is plant breeding? Breeding, what is plant breeding? Economically important plants are produced that is called as plant breeding. Second one is animal husbandry. We learnt breeding of animals is called animal husbandry. Then we learnt what is green revolution, increasing the food production, 
by improving the crop varieties is called green revolution and we learned who are the scientists involved in green revolution then we learned what is bio fortification and then we learned what are the different methods of plant breeding the first one is introduction and second one is the selection third one is polyploid breeding fourth one is mutation breeding and fifth one is hybridization at last we learn what is heterosis or hybrid vigor so we shall continue the same lesson in the next video thank you boys be safe stay at home thank you